the Surrey Transfer Station. We've got a crew inside doing the waste composition study. Right now, they're ripping open a bunch of bags that a truck has dumped, and they're taking all of the waste inside, sorting it into 160 different categories, and then they're weighing that out. So they do this for four weeks, and they go to different transfer stations every week, and then they're five days a week. It's something we do every couple of years to look what's in the garbage. Waste composition audit data is extremely important. We need to know what's still being thrown out so we know, for example, how well our programs are working to divert waste. If you looked at the garbage uh, 20 years ago, it was quite different from what it is today. Certainly there was more of almost everything, um, more organics, more paper, more plastic, and so on. We've had a lot of new recycling opportunities that have come up and we brought in things like EPR programs, Extended Producer Responsibility, or take-back programs as they're sometimes called. What we actually see more of in the garbage now is things like personal electronics. Um, there are many devices that simply didn't exist uh, 20 years ago. Audit materials are recorded by weight, but a range of values dictate the Metro Vancouver priorities. A uh, single-use plastic bag, for example, uh, doesn't weigh very much at all, uh, but littered um, uh, it becomes a problem, especially when it gets into the marine environment. The thinking has actually evolved in the last uh, few decades. It's now much more uh, an awareness of the environmental impact. Disposable bags and coffee cups often end up in street bins. So this audit also sampled street bins from eight regional municipalities. We're hoping to learn if there are particular types of items that are commonly being placed in the wrong bins, like coffee cups in the garbage. The well, streetscape bins tend to have very high levels of contamination. So for the garbage, this means that recycling is ending up going to the landfill. And in the recycling streams, it means that the material can be too contaminated to be processed by recycling facilities. The ick factor? Definitely a waste composition study is not the kind of activity where you like to go to that and then go to a dinner party immediately afterwards. But that has actually gotten better. It's fascinating, actually. The, you think it's going to be really gross, but when you're actually looking at it, it's like, wow, look at the things that people throw out. And it really makes you think, like, oh, I should maybe not throw these things out. It's definitely been an exciting evolution of garbage. Um, <laughs> exciting and garbage don't really go together in most people's minds, but if you work in the industry, it, it has been very exciting. Um, there's been tremendous growth in the recycling opportunities, but also, in those specialized, hazard, more hazardous materials like household hazardous wastes and some electronics and so on. And, and also organics. Um, or, organics still is the largest single material in our uh, waste stream composed of organics. But there's also been a really big increase in the diversion of organics out of the garbage. And that's just going to continue. The waste audit revealed the most common items in the garbage were compostable materials at just over a quarter of all waste. The next two top items were paper and plastics, each comprising over 15% of the whole waste load. See the whole list of what people are throwing out in the 2018 Metro Vancouver Waste Composition Report, available at metrovancouver.org.